Hey everybody, I wanted to show you a process that we're going to be working on uh, in the upcoming uh, months here at the uh, new house. Prior to us uh, leaving Michigan uh, several years ago, we were working on a project uh, of sustainability and uh, it actually was working out pretty well uh, so long as we had enough people to help um, put it together. Now, um, I'm kind of excited to show you this. I'm excited to get it back up and running. Uh, so let me get right to it here. Right there is pellet machine I purchased a few years ago, several years ago, and uh, we were making uh, pellets with this thing. Uh, my brother-in-law put some eyes and a nose and a mouth on it, but we'll go over here this machine here in a second. Um, <clears throat> we made enough pellets uh, basically to heat three homes uh, for an entire winter here in Michigan. Um, so let me go over this process here, how we had it set up. Now this, this uh, I call it the, the pellet making plant, hasn't really been used in uh, probably about four years uh, since I left Michigan. So let me, uh, let me go over how we were doing this and uh, well let's just get to it. <clears throat> okay so we were taking, um, well first off, we were in this canopy, okay? The canopy is, is since uh, needing in some need of repair, but um, what we would do is we'd have, uh, well, I don't think the uh, ends were on it when uh, my, my dad had put the ends on this just to kind of help keep it enclosed, but we would bring in uh, sawdust and bring them in in these, these uh, carts here and then <clears throat> what I would do is I would stand, let me back up, I would stand right here and I would take the sawdust and then here back here we'd back up the truck or trailer and we brought in distiller's grain and then we would mix a ratio of 60 percent wood to 60 percent distiller's grain. Let me show you what the sawdust looks like. This is exactly how we left it when four years ago. I can't believe this. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, there's the uh, there's the wood shavings, wood chips, sawdust, whatever you want to call it, and then <clears throat> the distiller's grain is here, and that's what the distiller's grain looks like. It just looks like cornmeal pretty much and uh, we tried several several different uh, recipes until we got it down that uh, uh, we I think we could actually even get the uh, pellets um, down to 25 percent wood chips or uh, excuse me 75 percent wood and um, 25 percent corn in any event I mixed this and this was powered by a motor here that also has a blower on it and the blower we'll come back to that towards the end of the process but the motor here would then you know run the <clears throat> run the mixer cement mixer and I do five or so gallons at a time and then I would dump and have the bucket there and then handle we uh, we devised here we just go ahead and dump the uh, chips into there and material into there and then I would feed it into the top of the hopper and the hopper would stay full and that thing would chug out and this thing would just uh, <clears throat> blow out pellets okay now <clears throat> had this set up at first you can see down here I made a rack I'll, I'm going to show you guys more of this when uh, when I get it together but um, that mounted there and the pellets would fall right out into uh, a container of sorts and then later uh, I realized well that's uh, that's a process that you know it takes a minute to wait till that's full and then transfer them over there that's that's what we were using uh, these are some some drying uh, trays we made it on nothing but a screen and a, uh, a 4x4 frame And then I came up with this idea, and this is an old treadmill. And what I did was um, 
I set it up so that the, the pellets would come out of the machine, fall onto here, and they'd hit the pressure switch, or a, a, a micro switch, the pellets would fall here and they'd build up a little mound, and then they'd push the switch, and then it'd kick on and it'd take them up to here and it'd shut off, and then that gave them a little bit of time to cool off before they fell into the drying racks. So you can kind of see how that set up, that was moved over here and it would go up there and drop into the cooling rack. Well then the cooling rack, <clears throat> that was a manual part. If you look, this is pegboard, okay, and that's where that blower comes in, okay. So if you can imagine one of these trays full of pellets sitting on the, on the table, see there's several of them, and they just move on down the line, okay. Well the, the pegboard works out like this, you see the blower here, okay, air come out of there, went through this tube and it transferred all the way up <clears throat> into where is it right there it go up into the into the uh, can't really get to it right now <clears throat> right there you might be able to see it it turns okay I think it goes all the way down to the middle or so and then it goes into that table that tables hollow under there and air would come out of all those little holes thus blowing air and cooling off the pellets so by the time they made it to the other end again a manual process <clears throat> then we had banana boxes or these totes but we had some banana boxes set up that's what we were storing them in there's another rack sitting down there with a tire on it but uh, <clears throat> you basically just dump them here and it's kind of funneled you can kind of see you take the uh, take the tray and you dump it and, and then they would all come into the funnel and fall right down the center into the bucket or the uh, box. And what we did is we took uh, trash bags and lined really uh, pretty much cheap trash bags and we'd line the, the banana boxes. And uh, I used banana boxes because about 50 pounds of pellets would fit in one of those and they stacked really nice. And then uh, and that's it. That's pretty much the process. Now when we had it running good we could chuck out a lot of pellets. This thing is supposed to produce somewhere along the lines of, there's a tag on here, I can't quite remember, I think it was about 400 pounds an hour. Bear with me here. Well, where is it? Oh, you know what? I think it was... I don't know, we'll find it later, we'll talk about it later. But anyway, now, this is powered by a diesel motor, and uh, I, uh, I looked at several of these before I finally bought one, and I like this one, you can, you know, if you look up, go ahead and YouTube it and look it up, Google it, you'll find um, several pellet setups, pellet making machines, and uh, uh, you'll find little bitty guys. And this is, uh, this one here is a 22 horsepower, and, make sure I'm speaking correctly anyway yeah I, I believe it's 22 horses and <clears throat> what I really liked about this one is it's an indirect type of drive because most of them have the drive connecting directly to the mill head and I thought if the motor is pulling that tight on those pulleys that you could possibly wear out the, the uh, mill head bearings. So with this here process, now what I can do is um, I run the 22 horses, run this, it's the pulley, it's got some, you know, some grease search in there. And then there's a coupler under here. And uh, let's see if I can get a better shot of that. There it is right there. You can kind of see it's, a, it's like a, look, just looks like a mini drive shaft. Okay, so the mini drive shaft there um, connects with a universal joint <clears throat> and uh, that's how she's powered. The other thing nice about this particular setup as you see I had a little forethought. Now I can take this this just the mill head off mount it on a look at that see that like a three-point mount system like that rig up 
a drive shaft to connect to a PTO on a three-point tractor. So that's uh, that's Plan B. Uh, that's that's another another way to do it if uh, if I so desired. Okay, now the other thing. Let's go back to the motor here for a minute. This is diesel power. It's a diesel motor. Um, uh, the rust that's on this thing is just because the the water here is really rusty. Uh, a lot of iron in it. Um, and we're going to be going over some videos on that too, and on how to uh, get the iron out. Um, any event, the way this thing works is you fill this with water, and you fill that with with uh, diesel. Okay. And as you fill it up, that little yellow uh, button will raise up. And it just basically that water encompasses the head of the motor and as it heats up it's just evaporation that's how it stays cool um, it'll boil and spit and sputter and that's why you see all the rust and stuff all over the top of it but um, we'll be getting into this and cleaning this all up and cleaning out the air filter putting a new oil filter uh, oil filter on it and uh, going over everything in the near future but uh, we got some stock to start with. This was left over from several years ago. Looks like that one got pretty wet. But uh, some of it may end up in the compost pile. Well, anyway, the whole thing is mounted to, to a trailer so that it's portable. That thing's heavy. When it was shipped, it came in two pieces. Motor and drive. And you can see where it separates right there and uh, that's that's where that part mount this mounts to this part and see all this is is uh, it's just welded on here uh, this this I or C channel here is welded onto the onto the boat trailer um, and then this is uh, just bolted on so this like I said the mill head and the motor it all can be removed off the trailer and uh, remounted in different configuration. Oh, the other thing about this one is uh, we've got electric start. There's the there's the starter and that's where I mounted the switch to start the unit. Towards the front here mounted a, a toolbox. Um, it's like with every process you got to have tools so that's where all the tools are kept and stored. So I'm looking I'm looking forward to uh, showing you guys uh, this uh, this pellet process. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be sustainable stuff. And uh, um, on top of uh, making the pellets, uh, we're going to have uh, several um, different ways to burn the pellets. Uh, we got a pellet burner. Um, we got uh, my rocket heater. Uh, I'm going to adapt it to uh, burn pellets as well. So lots of uh, upcoming things regarding making pellets and how to make pellets and. Um, and, and the stock that we're going to use. Um, all right, so thanks a lot for watching and uh, um, look forward to some upcoming videos on how to make pellets to heat your house. All right, thanks a lot and we'll see you guys on the next video.